scientific illustration is an essential but time-consuming step to communicate your research. There are many tutorials out there and I felt like personally they are too artistic for scientific use. I hope this video saved you time to navigate what are the critical features of Inkscape that is relevant to researcher. I hope this part 2 video is going to help you to gain your basic knowledge required so that you know what to google and what tutorial to watch next. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Inkscape is a really important tool for your publications and poster making. And I'm going to show you a few tricks behind the screen. I hope it's going to make you think about Inkscape as not only an illustration tool, but also a really handy tool for you to optimize your figure and quickly make changes to a few things that you need to do for your publications. Inkscape is helpful because it tells you exactly the dimension of your figure. And a lot of time when you are submitting to a journal, they have a specific dimension requirement. So with Inkscape, you will know better the resolution of images than in PowerPoint, for example. When you are preparing a manuscript for publication, there's often an author guideline and you must read it before you submit. For example, it's everyone's dream to publish in nature. There is a figure sizing criteria. It's best for your figure to show up as 89 millimeter by single column width or 183 millimeter for the full page. And the height of the full page can be as tall as 247 millimeter. In Inkscape, you can be assured that all of your figures are compliant to all the publication requirements. It's a really helpful way to understand my figure. You can view Inkscape under centimeter, millimeter, inches, or pixels. Well, how it works is all these number on the side report the unit that is set on the top here. You can set paper size by going to File, Document Property, and you can see the page size is A4 right now by default. And if you need it to be an A0 or A1 poster, I can just set that up by shrinking my page of view. You can see that now we are actually having 750 millimeter on the top. You can see from 0 to 1250 millimeters. When you import an image, drag and drop an image like this histology photos that I found from image J. You can see exactly this is the biggest resolution I can print this on my poster. Pay attention if you drag this any bigger when you print it, you will see pixelation. So avoid stretching any picture beyond the sizes. But instead, you can hold down on control key, scale it back to a smaller size. And, and if I do this again without holding down the control key, you can see the aspect ratio could change. You can draw shapes and boxes and by selecting the path, you can run the side of the rectangle by dragging this anchor point. I can control the stroke style by how thick I want it to be. You will discover in Inkscape, many objects can be maneuvered in a much greater detail. You can draw different shapes and you can see if you reduce the number of corners all the way down to three corners, it will be a triangle, square, pentagon, a hexagon, and so on. Hold down control key. You can control the base of this triangle to be parallel to the base of the sheet. Now if I place another rectangle like this and then another rectangle like this on top here, 
you can align everything by going to align and distribute and make sure everything is aligned to the middle you probably guess what i'm drawing from the first video after all of these three objects were selected you can go to path union and this way you are suddenly making from three shapes combined into one shape go to the second icon below the select and transform object is edit paths by node if you click that you will see all of these paths are editable if you can make the node smooth and you see that we are highlighting the base of this and we have this smooth corner give the node a rounded shape make the base parallel to the table so it's sitting flat like this. And if you want to fill the flask with color, I just copy and paste, duplicating one of these, make a rectangle on top. Go to path again, and this time I can do difference in paths. So what happened is I'm taking exactly the same shape, but I just have the base. So I can fill this up with a color, overlay the two, you are having now a free drawing that is a flask with different color, different type of reagent, different color, different concentration. Align them by middle and bottom. If you group the two objects together, this will be like one sticker and you can stamp them around like this. Now you are actually able to align the flask by making sure they are the same alignment in the center, they can be distributed horizontally. But remember, if you haven't grouped them, you will have issue aligning without grouping them as a flask first. The alignment will be like this. If you work more on Inkscape, you will have the sensitivity. So let's say you are happy with the alignment of all the three flasks and let's say they are too big. You can group all of these shapes again, hold down on the control key and resize everything according to the same aspect ratio. They will be scaled to the same thickness. You can scale with the same stroke thickness by the same proportion. This is an option you can check off or not. But in this case, I am making everything as the same thickness. So say for example, we have a hypothetical bar chart here. The bar can be imported directly as an image. You can add your asterisk for your figures. Annotate where are these significant values. So your asterisk can go here. So usually p-values less than 0.05 is one asterisk. You can annotate on the top to depict they are the same statistical group. You can copy and paste the same type of font. You can also change it to method, result and discussion. A lot of us have to publish micrograph results and let me use this histology image as a dummy to represent a panel of four images. Now you can align all these figures like we have aligned objects before, so I'm not going to show you all of that. You can add little things like figure A, B and C on the top corner, type in the font size make it white font to show up better on a dark field image. You could also add a white triangle to indicate any key features on your micrograph. You can also consider using more than one color of arrows if you can publish colored figure. Let's say you need to submit this file as a figure image. You could export this selected area by selecting export area. Some of the journal require publishing at 300 dpi, so you could type that in. Select your file names and destination to save the file. 
There's one thing I always forget is after you click export as, there is a second button over the lower right corner. You have to click export, otherwise you won't find the file at the destination. I found myself always forgetting to click the final export button, so I hope this helps. There is a good website called reactom.org. They are built by a bunch of scientists who want to make science communication better. Under the community page, the icon library, you can check out all these available cell elements that you can insert for your own illustration. And the SVG files of these objects are downloadable and modifiable. So for example, I can download this DNA Goji apparatus mitochondrion. Inside the poster, I can drag and drop all these objects that I think are useful. If you click ungroup, you will see that these shapes are actually modifiable. Click on the mitochondrion. If you click again on the mitochondrion, you can see instead of resizing, you could actually rotate the image by dragging the corner. And if you ungroup the figure, you can change the color, tailor it, and I've already shown you how to change anchor points. You can see your imagination is the limit with Inkscape. Basically, this is how I would build a poster. I found this a lot more stable and a lot more professional to build than a PowerPoint slide because being able to manipulate line thickness, being able to make new shapes is a game changer for me. If you are printing, the most secure way is to save the file as a PDF. And again, if you need to print at 300 dpi, um, you could also type that in. We can open this file as a really large PDF folder. And on the lower right, you can see this image has been shown at 39% magnification. So if you zoom it in to 100%, you don't see any pixelation on especially the image file, meaning we didn't stretch it too much. There shouldn't be any pixelation when you print it. This is an example when you are overly stretching an image, this is how it will look like. I'm not going to write a whole paper in this video, but I hope this is going to inspire you on what you can do with Inkscape so I hope this video is helpful for you to understand other applications of Inkscape and you can use Inkscape more often in your publication and thesis writing. If you have any question or comment about using this software, you can leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.